<laughs> I'm live. I survived the eclipse. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to Cliff Notes Live. Hope y'all are doing fantastic. Run a little bit late because my sundial was all messed up for some reason. Oh, well, yeah, that was bad. It won't get any better this evening. I hope y'all are doing fantastic. Let me start off with a big old SKD 143. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love reality TV. I love those of you who come out here and spend every Monday with me, uh, Monday night. And I found out I really love the sunshine as well. Uh, we were a little short of sunshine down here in Houston, not just because of whatever weird astronomical things were going on, but because it was just kind of kind of rainy and cold and wet down here. We'll, we'll talk about it all here in just a second, along with whatever else y'all got in mind. But in the meanwhile, uh, before going further, just wanted to make mention that if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to Cliff Notes YouTube channel. Uh, also, maybe turn on those notifications and you can give away those thumbs up. I don't think you can give two. So I'll, I'll settle for one. Give you a thumbs up or give me a thumbs up while you're out there. It's always appreciated. Uh, kind of our off season. Uh, yeah, we talk about all kinds of stuff pretty soon, though. It's going to be Big Brother time again. Uh, and, and then we'll have a lot, of, a lot of new folks come on board to see the recaps and all that. And so, uh, yeah, go and get your subscription in a little bit early so, so you're ahead of the rest of the pack. Man, I'm so glad to see y'all. Kind of a weird, weird day, right? Uh, at least for some parts of the country. In other parts of the country, you know, just, just another day. All right, before we go any further, let me go out here and just... Uh, uh, real quick, and I know there's, I see a lot of comments. I'm going to try to avoid the comments. Let me just holler out the names first, and then, then we'll we'll come back and, and visit a little bit. Uh, Brian Hosseller, what an amazing, as I read the first comment, but just for the, what an amazing eclipse. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I talked to a lot of people who saw it. We saw a little bit of it here. We'll talk about it. Uh, Brian, how are you doing? Uh, Marilyn Sutherland as well. Jake, the horror movie geek. Uh, Mark Taylor. I love seeing all y'all's names out here. Karen Loveland. Uh, hello from West Virginia. Did some work in West Virginia. Ma, I hope you're doing fantastic. Cindy, you as well. Hope you're doing doing amazing. Uh, Nunez, 1919. Howdy there. Laura Lewis, Desiree Watts, uh, Paula Scar. Let's see who else we got here. Terry Thomas. Terry, how are you? Terry Atler Jr., Ed Brewer, Karen Hummer, Kendra, Wyatt Garrett. You saw the eclipse, didn't you, Wyatt? Uh, Taylor Mangus, uh, Andy W., and Chickie D. Kenny. Chick D, how are, how are y'all doing? I hope, I hope everything's going well with, with you guys as well. All right. So yeah, I guess uh, all kinds of stuff to talk about. Let's see. Well, Mark Taylor saying, did you watch the eclipse? Yeah, kind of. I mean, here's the thing. Houston was not in the path of totality. For Texas, it went through a little bit of San Antonio. It went through Austin. My son and, and his daughter-in-law over in Austin. They saw the totality and it was really cool i saw some of their pictures went on up uh, in the north texas hit dallas fort worth which is where my family's from my mom seventh grade science teacher retired science teacher anything about science she loves no exception with the uh, the eclipse she she had a blast watching it uh and so so they all did it originally sharon and i were going to go up to to arlington hang out with my mom see the eclipse you know, you don't get that many chances to do it. We were going to do that, but they start saying the weather is going to be so bad. It's going to be so completely cloudy. Strike one. Strike two was hearing them talk about how many people were showing up at all these locations for the uh, for the eclipse and that there was a state of emergency. Make sure you have gas filled up beforehand uh, because so many people are going to be trying to get out of there all at once. Traffic was going to be horrific. They're actually calling for hail, hailstorms, thunderstorms, thunderstorm warnings throughout Texas. And so with all of that and the fact that I had to sh do a show to do this evening, we talked about it. Finally, said, remember, Texas is a big state. I'm in Houston. We were going to have to go up to Dallas. I didn't just a little jaunt. That's that's about a four and a half hour drive for us. So nine hours round trip to see about four minutes of, of eclipse at the end of the day. We, we chickened out. We just said, you know what? That's what TV is all about. Uh, you can't see it the same, I don't think. But we stayed here. We watched the eclipse here in Houston, which was, I think they said, 94% totality or something. So it didn't cover it up the same way. It was still pretty cool. I've got some pictures I'm going to post on, uh, uh, on Instagram or, or Twitter later tonight or tomorrow. So y'all watch for it. Uh, here's the pictures I got. You've seen about 100 photos of the the eclipse behind me right here, right? I mean, and, and they all look kind of the same. I got some cool shots because the storm clouds were so heavy over Houston. 
but there for just a little bit. They got a little bit of a break for the sun, uh, and, and we were able to see it with just a little bitty sliver on the side. But it's really cool because you have these huge clouds all the way around it. Just the, the, I don't know, dark clouds. They look like pebbles, rocks or something with this crescent sun right in the middle. It looked like something that the Hubble telescope or something would take. So I'm not a photographer, but I actually thought it was kind of cool. So I'll post those a little bit later. So yeah, the, the, that's a long answer. The short answer is yes, we saw the eclipse. We did not see it 100% coverage. It's tough. If you lived in Florida or California, somewhere like that, it'd be easy to say, yeah, that's a long way to go to see an eclipse. But when you're just a few hours away, it made it a little bit tougher decision, but, but I'm fine with it. Because here's the kicker. The next one isn't going to be for another 20 years or so. I don't think it's here in the United States. It's going to be somewhere else 20 years or so. It just gives me more incentive to stick around for another 20 years, which means around 2044 or so, wherever it is, Antarctica or Australia or somewhere, I'm going to say, you know, 20 years ago, I said I'd just wait 20 years to the next one and go wherever it is. So, I got me a vacation coming up. I'm, I'm starting to count down now. Uh, Cliff Solar Eclipse 2044. I'll be ready for that one. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I kind of saw it. I want to hear about y'all. Uh, what Some of y'all I know were in the, the area where you saw it. Others, maybe not so much. Tell me what y'all's thoughts were uh, with it. Uh, and, and we'll talk about we'll talk about that as we go through. Now, it doesn't mean that I didn't get in the uh, uh, the eclipse spirit. How could you avoid it? So many of these newscasts, I swear, there are there are reporters uh, that treated this eclipse the same way some of the reporters treat hurricanes in, in this area, where they're, they're, their hair is blowing, you think it's 150 mile winds, and then you pull back and there's a couple of people walking down the street. I'm not saying that anyone overdid it, but I kind of am. There were people so emotional. There were people... I believe more emotional about this solar eclipse than the Native American Indians were back in you know, 1100 when when they saw it and thought it was the the sun god abandoning them or something. I, I more people that seemed like they were on the verge of tears and so much excitement when the sun came back up and yeah, the people really got into it. And I, I guess I don't blame them. They, they enjoyed it. It is a very rare event, but yeah, people people really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and we did too, but, uh, here's what we did to make this a, a very special day for those of us who weren't in the path of totality. Uh, we weren't around and, uh, did you know there's some restaurants that have all kinds of specials for, uh, uh, for, for solar eclipse day? Yeah, I found out and we had fun. Sharon and I had fun just going all over this part of town, trying to take advantage of every single little food discount that we could find for the, for the solar eclipse, just to say we did it. So a list of where we, where we went and one or two things we got, uh, we went to Sonic, uh, and got a solar eclipse blast, which was, oh, it was a uh, cotton candy flavored with star fruit flavoring, a soft serve ice cream and black and purple sprinkles all through it in, into a, like an ice cream kind of dessert. Maybe not my favorite flavor, but hey, it looked cool. So we went to Sonic. We did that. We went to Burger King, which had specials on their Jumbo Jacks. We went to Jack in the Box, which had, or no, Jumbo Jacks at Jack in the Box. We went there. We went to Burger King, and we got their Solar Clip special on uh, on their Whopper sandwiches. Uh, we went to uh, Dunkin' Donuts, had a, a special uh, 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 don uh, donut that you could get, their, their Blackout Donut. Uh, we went to uh, Chili's uh, for lunch this afternoon and had a uh, uh, their Eclipse special, which uh, got an appetizer. You know, some of them are a little bit better than others. So the key is we just went all over uh, and had a lot of fun just doing doing silly stuff. Now, here's the one thing that that we wanted to do that I wanted to do, and I didn't get a chance. I figured solar eclipse, the moon's getting in the way of the uh, of the sun and all that perfect time to go get me some moon pies. Y'all know what moon pies are? I, as some of y'all, I know what new moon pies are. Probably the ones who live further south and, and maybe have a few more years on them. Uh, I think it's a tendency for moon pies. Moon pies are I don't know, some kind of a, it's a marshmallow inside with, with some kind of bread topping or on the outside. It's like a cookie. Marshmallow on the inside, then a soft bread, and it's coated in 
chocolate or it's coated in banana or vanilla. You can get a few different flavors with it. You bite into it. It's like you melted a peep in in between a couple of oatmeal cookies or something. I, that's closest I can get. I, I don't know. It's it's called a moon pie. I grew up eating them. I probably haven't had a moon pie in a couple of years, uh, and and I decided, yeah, well, it's it's the eclipse. We got to have some. Did you know? I could not find moon pies anywhere in this part of Houston. Some places that carried them completely sold out. Other places acted like I was ordering, I don't know, a roast monkey or something. Yeah, like I was the strangest thing in the world to ask for moon pie. I don't know. Couldn't find them anywhere. Somewhere, someone must have had one heck of a moon pie solar eclipse party because they cleaned out all the stores here. Again, it's been a couple of years since I've had one. And yet, as of about five o'clock this afternoon, when I checked the last store that didn't have them, all I can think about is moon pies. I got all these burger restaurants, everything else that we're going to put in the fridge and keep for the next couple of days and all that. But all I can think about is a moon pie. So yeah, it's it's a it's a tough night for, for old boss hog here. You know, the last time I had moon pies, I was thinking about it. I, I think the last time I had them was probably uh, uh, when I, right after I got at the Big Brother house, uh, we went to Bucky's, a big convenience store down here, and I tried to buy up a whole bunch of Texas-oriented stuff uh, and I sent it all up to Nicole and her family up in Long Island. Just, you know, I, I, Texas, Long Island, all that. So I bought a bunch of moon pies and other things and sent it up to Nicole and, and her sisters and her mom and dad. And I may have bought a few extra just, just for me to sample out. You know, I got to make sure they're fresh and stuff before I send them to her. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, that's probably last time. And now I got a hankering for, for moon pies. I can't find them anywhere. We talked while I was in the Big Brother house about moon pies. I, I remember. I don't know if y'all remember our season. There was a little bit at one point where Tommy and Christy and some of the others really got upset with Mickey and myself and Kat uh, and Holly that we they thought we were working together. We were, uh, but they they figured it out and they were saying, oh, y'all are calling y'all sell yourselves the Southerners. I said, yeah, we may have said we were more or less from the South, but I don't remember us ever calling ourselves. I didn't like having names for alliances. I certainly didn't ever call ourselves the Southerner Alliance, Alliance, but they claim that. And I, as part of that, I remember at one point us talking about, we were probably the only ones in the house who, who knew what moon pies were. I think Ovi, Ovi knew as well, being from Tennessee. I don't think anyone else in that house knew, knew what moon pies were, but yeah. So, so the Southerners, we had, it. I never named an alliance. I didn't like Cliff's Angels as an alliance. I sure wasn't going to have the Southerners as an alliance. Didn't matter. They still called us out and, Maybe someone said that. Maybe they were just trying to make it more than it was. You couldn't say anything in that house without getting called on it uh, every single time. So so there you go. So, yeah, if you haven't tried a moon pie, try it. The old saying was always a moon pie and an RC cola. Uh, RC colas, I guess they maybe are still around. Tastes a little bit like a Pepsi. <laughs> I got a lot of food waiting for you. I'm ready. Uh, Y'all can tell uh, food is on my mind. It's not my fault. It's it's the eclipse. It, it's done wacky stuff with those solar rays and, and all of that, right? Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. All right, a few questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, for Maryland's, uh, let me go through a few comments. Now. Maryland says you, you only saw pics. Yeah, that's all right. They're, they're pretty cool pics, aren't they? Uh, Brian is saying, amazing eclipse, great pics. I agree. Ma didn't see it. Well, Ma, you got plenty of time uh, before the next one comes. You'll, you'll be around and ready for the next one. Uh, Cindy saying couldn't see it uh, too overcast. You know, there are a lot of people that spend a lot of money uh, just to have it overcast. Terry saying it was beautiful. It is a wild experience. Uh, and Taylor saying I uh, had a partial a crescent moon. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we were. Here's the thing. It's cool to see. I, and seeing it in person, a lot more cool than, than seeing you know, on TV or whatever. Right? It's, it's our sun, right? You look up, you see it. I don't care how modern day we are and everything else. It's still got to create a little bit of a stir uh, that evolutionary, whatever's deep inside us, you know, that's, that's what gives us life and sustenance and all that. So it, it does have an impact on a subconscious level. I think here's what I think is really cool. Not, not that you see it, that they can predict it to such an extent and that they've been able to predict these things for hundreds and hundreds of years, I was listening on the NASA channel and they're saying, yeah, the, the eclipse that happened in 1840 uh, or they, they were able to 
see planets because of that. The one in 1940 was when they were able to prove Einstein's theory of relativity because the light was bending and they saw it bending because the sun wasn't interfering. And they've used, they've known about eclipses. They've been able to predict them forever. And they've been able to do so much cool stuff. Once you get this thing blocking out all the sun, sun rays and you can then see you know, everything that you normally can't see because the sun's filtering it or blocking it all out and everything. So the fact that they knew within 100 feet or so, you know, you're going to be in the path. You're not going to be in a path or whatever. Draw those neat little maps. That's what amazes me. All these moving parts, these moving components, and, and they're able to track it and predict it and everything. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. I wonder what, Bill, if you're on the moon, just hanging around. Yeah, sitting there in a lounge chair, uh, waving at the folks down on Earth. And an eclipse comes across like one had down. Can you see the shadow? Can can you see the, your shadow of the moon drawing a little black line across the Earth as it goes across? Or is it such a small line that it's hard to see? I don't know. I, I would think maybe. They always say you can see the Great Wall of China from space. I, I've heard that maybe is a little bit of a myth. Uh, but. It seems like a shadow the size of a moon maybe would be something you could see from up there. That'd be pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah. One of these days, I have my bucket list, sit up on the moon and watch an eclipse from the other side. It'd be kind of cool. All right, Kent saying, awesome event. Next one in the U.S. will be 2044. Okay, so yeah, I thought it was 20 years or so. I just wasn't sure if it was the United States or not. All right, put me down for that one. Um, that'll be probably 79. I, I can do it. That's heck, 20 years from now. Maybe I won't be in the United States. Maybe I will be sitting up on some space station somewhere. Uh, how cool would it be if at some point they move Big Brother up to a space station instead? Yeah, you know, they're, they're having to rebuild the house, theoretically, supposedly. We uh, we don't know that for certain, but uh, supposedly the, the CBS lot's going through some changes. I just go ahead and talk to Elon. He's got all kinds of money, uh, or Bezos, or one of the space guys. Put up a big brother house up in, in near earth or orbit, orbit, near earth orbit. Play the game there. Hey, I guarantee when you get evicted from the house, if it involves a, a, a parachute and one hell of a drop, you may be playing the game a lot harder than some people play sometimes. Uh, you may be a little less inclined to, uh, uh, to, to, to walk out that door uh, in that situation, right? Wouldn't it be cool instead of the going out the door and seeing Julie, you, you, you open up a, a airlock and you just go floating off. And uh, I don't know, maybe Sandra Bullock's out there in a spacesuit with George Clooney to, to pull you back in and save you or something. I'm, I'm just thinking ahead. Uh, Big Brother season 52 or something like that, right? All right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Someday, someday we will have a reality show in space. All right. Uh, Laura Luce is saying uh, Lake Erie was 97% totality. All right. Y'all were a little bit more than we were. Uh, Andy W. is saying too cloudy in Oregon. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, Chicky D and Kenny, uh, Chicky D and Kenny saying uh, reporting was uh, was exciting. <laughs> GMA's uh, Good Morning America's Robin Roberts got emotional. Yeah, some of them, there was someone that was in, uh, I think it was Niagara Falls, New York, which uh, I could, I've got to go up there later this year for training. I wish they'd done it now. But uh, anyway, she up at Niagara Falls, she was pretty excited. Now, I feel bad because she was talking to some family and said, oh, we're, we're right in the middle. We're right in the middle. What do you think about it? And she kept trying to interview them. I'm, I'm sure on one hand, they're probably pretty excited they got to be on TV. But on the other hand, they're probably saying, you know, we got four minutes. You don't have to interview us during the entire four minute, minute segment here. We, we kind of like to look over here and see it. But the question just kept coming up and, and all of that. Uh, we had one of the local newscasts. They were it, it was fun watching them talk to the, the little kids who were seeing it for the first time. And they asked one little girl, she's probably about six or so. They, they said, so what's happening today? And she said, it's a clip. Uh, what? It, it's going to be a clip. Yeah, okay. What happened? She said, the, the, the moon and the earth or the, the moon and the sun get together and there, there ain't no light. The moon and the earth get to the moon and the sun get together and, and there's no light. And so she kind of had it figured out. Uh, but yeah, it was fun. They were all had their cereal boxes that they were going to be able to look inside and see it. Everyone down here, they issued solar glasses to everyone. I'm sure they did in y'all's y'all's areas as well. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Karen Loveland is saying scientists were studying the animals' reactions. Yeah, hey, hey, I've always heard that. I know they were broadcasting from the zoo here in Houston. And they said that as soon as they got kind of the maximum bit of totality here, at one point a little breeze came through and the giraffes all ran to one side of the, the pen or whatever. 
I, I'll trust the scientists more than whatever I don't know, but it seems to me, don't like clouds pass over animals all the time. Big old thunderclouds and it gets dark and horrifically dark and all that. And the animals like, hmm. so I don't know from an animal standpoint that an animal goes, oh my God, it got dark. Why? It's the middle of the day when it got dark. Maybe it's something other than the actual light. It, it, maybe it's the, the solar rays, the x-rays or something that suddenly there's the, the absence of them. Uh, you can't get a sunburn during a solar eclipse. Uh, how would you like to be a, a sand, suntan uh, uh, salesman? Of course, before and after, uh, you probably sell a lot. But yeah, not so much during the, uh, the event itself. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've heard that, that. They were curious how the animals would respond, birds and, and all of that. Lots of stuff that people can study in this world. Uh, Amanda Lowe is saying, uh, did you ever want to work for NASA? You know, I, that's kind of cool. And now as I think about it, it'd be a lot of cool. But I didn't grow up in the Houston area. I grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I was always a huge space nut. Uh, for me, it was the Apollo Soyuz mo uh, mission uh, where the Russians and the Americans got together in space and shook hands and all that. Uh, I kind of remember the Apollo missions, but just barely the, the end ones. Uh, but I remember uh, those missions. And so I've always been a huge uh, space fan. I, I loved Armageddon because it's space and oil drillers up in space. Yeah, one of these days uh, we'll we'll have oil drilling. Of course, the environmentalists would hate that, but we'll be maybe it won't be oil. But, but certainly there will continue to be ways to uh, to. to take advantage of, of what's existing on other planets, be it hydrogen or minerals, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, when I came down here, uh, Sharon lived very close to, uh, to NASA and we still live down here and her mom worked for NASA. We got into this neighborhood. We started meeting so many astronauts and flight directors and people like that. It became a little bit more of a passion for me. I always wanted to be uh, an oil man, a petroleum engineer, because that was what Texas was all about, right? Uh, but uh, once we got down here, it's a little bit different. We got to go see uh, one of the last, the very last shuttle that launched at night. Uh, we got to see that as mission 101, I think. I, I can't remember, but we, we knew uh, one of the people, uh, the astronauts, uh, pretty well. So they invited us and we got to go watch the launch, watch it with the families. Uh, really cool. Uh, one of the most amazing things. The power on those rockets is incredible. So, yeah, no, I don't know. I... <laughs> It would be interesting working for NASA just because they do so much cool stuff. Uh, but the reality is a lot of the stuff they do is just their government position. At the end of the day, as cool as it is to be an astronaut, just, they're just a government employee that has to put up with all kinds of red tape and, and all kinds of other stuff as well. I don't know that I have the physique to fit into a spaceship. Most of, most of the astronauts, a little bit, little bit smaller this way, and this way, uh, yeah, they, they'd put me on a space diet and then things would change up. But yeah, no, I've never, I'd love to go up in a, a rocket, uh, hopefully one that comes down also uh, in a controlled descent. Uh, but, but I've never really thought about working for NASA, but, but full admiration for those who do. They, they do incredible stuff. All right, uh, Taylor Mangus is saying, glad I made the, uh, the live. I've been on the replay crew the last few weeks. Well, Taylor... That's what the replay is for out there. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. It's always so much more fun uh, having you all on board for the lives. But but I understand that Mondays can be busy times. So uh, thank you for, for making uh, Monday night tonight. Jake the Horror Movie Geek saying, I'd like to see Hunter. Oh, let's see. All right, we'll talk a little Survivor. I'd like to see Hunter and Tevin and Q in the final three or Charlie. I would be fine with all of those. <laughs> Charlie is interesting. Uh, Charlie's a Taylor Swift fan, right? I, I think. I'm starting finally to get these names in place and all that. Uh, he's, I think he's got a lot going on. He doesn't necessarily portray himself as a huge threat. Although some people, you know, I, I feel like they're starting to see that he's tight with some of the other guys on Hunter with all of his puzzles back home and all. I think he's playing a great game as well. Q there's a couple times where I feel like he's overplayed it just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm all for all those. And then Tevin, uh, Tevin's interesting. I he's gotten he's like the narrator for this season of of Survivor, right? It just seems like they have a lot of confessionals with him, and he's carried it right on through into social media. Every time I'm out on Instagram, it seems like he's having a, another Instagram live. So he's certainly enjoying a little bit of the limelight and all of that. And sometimes it makes me wonder 
if you're that big uh, in social media and all that, sometimes that suggests to me that you probably lasted a long time and you're really excited for people to watch and you want to very much stay involved. So I think Tevin's going to be here for, uh, for, for quite the ride, but yeah, I've, I got to say, I'm really enjoying this season. Even uh, this last episode, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it just uh, for, for a minute or so, we won't take forever, but uh, Mariah, uh, God, she, it's tough when you got to do that shot in the dark. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the shot, shot in the dark because uh, it's only a one in six chance and you lose your vote. I mean, you've really got to feel desperate. And I guess that's what it's there for. Uh, but here's what's interesting. And I didn't realize this until after the episode was over and I started thinking about it. someone voted to send Venus out the door and it wasn't Mariah because she lost her vote because she played the shot in the dark. So someone else, uh, is uh, cast that vote against Venus. And I don't remember, they always show while she's talking, then everyone's showing her votes. I don't remember if they showed who who voted to send out Venus. If any of y'all know, let me know, because I was going to go back and watch it and I accidentally deleted it early and everything. But yeah, someone someone cast a vote for Venus and she seems very, uh, she seems like she could take it kind of personal if, if people are coming after her. So I don't know. I, I think it's going to be a fun, uh, fun next few episodes. It is tough when they merge the, that tribe into such a large group of people. Because now they, they were 13. They got rid of Mariah. So now they're 12, right? A lot of people. I tell you, I know what it was like to have 16 people in a house, 12 people on a, on a beach. Can't be much better. So, yeah, we'll see how that all plays out. I'm enjoying Survivor so far. It's 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 been a good season, I think. All right. Ed Brewer is saying, what about Max, the, uh, the AI on the upcoming Circle season? I saw that. Um, I, I, I guess, do they call it the Turing test? I, I may be saying something differently. I feel like maybe it's called a Turing test where you get to a point where someone interviewing uh, an AI can't tell that it's that it's AI, that it's not a real person. I think that's what it's called. Uh, Ex Machina. I, have y'all seen that movie? One of my favorites. Creepy beyond all get out, but... I love Ex Machina, uh, Machina. I love the music on it. Uh, the, the, just a little, uh, little nerve wracking. But uh, uh, anyway, I know they talk about intelligence and AI and everything in there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how. So what if Max AI wins this that sucker? I mean, maybe he could. I'm, <laughs> you know how irritated I'd be if they put me on the circle and I'm sitting there trying to, to call, trying to fit in and play like i'm linda the the 20 year old co-ed from from northwestern or something and and meanwhile i'm having to play the game, game against some freaking ai intelligence that can call out or question or I, I don't know i don't know how they'll make it work because you know some of that ai stuff is pretty smart it seems like you could have an artificial intelligence that could could pick up on anything that was said that's slightly incorrect or whatever and blow the Blow the whistle on someone else that's that's maybe catfishing. I don't, I don't know. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'd seen that they mentioned that, but uh, I just kind of forgot. I need to get caught back up uh, on the circle. I saw the first couple of seasons and then you know, life gets in the way. And so I'm a few seasons behind. I, I need to to go go back. I, we were supposed, Shuby was supposed to be uh, from season one and season whatever the last one was. Uh, Shuby was supposed to be at Nicole's wedding and he wasn't able to make it. I, I hated that. I, he's such a fun guy to hang around. He's just a, just a nice guy. So I, I hated I didn't get a chance to see Shuby, but we'll, we'll meet up again somewhere down the road. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. I definitely want to watch the circle and see if if the uh, artificial intelligence shows them all, shows all the rest of them up. I, maybe. Uh, who, who'd be responsible for writing up that AI program? That could be kind of interesting. All right, let's see what else we've got on here. Uh, uh, Cindy is saying, uh, Cliff, the next, <laughs> the next J.R. Hewing, uh, Miss Fire saying when J.R. came from, uh, came to an event in the DC in the eighties and my dad was hired to guard him. Oh, him and Pamela Sue. I, I remember Dallas, Pamela Sue and Bobby Ewing and J.R. Uh, here's a little kicker for you. Uh, I've got an aunt and uncle who had a house outside Dallas almost got the the uh, uh the Dallas house uh, they actually talked to them about using that house uh for Dallas uh, I, I, some of you probably don't remember, a lot of you probably don't remember but at the start they fly over is a pretty decent house and and all that well my aunt and uncle 
had a house. It wasn't huge, but it's set up on a hill. It was farmland, kind of set up on a hill, removed from everything else. So it looked like it would be the house that you'd have at a, at a ranch and all that. They ended up not going with them because it didn't have a swimming pool and, and they wanted to have a big grand pool out there for a lot of the scenes and all that. But uh, my aunt and uncle for a long time still had a, uh, a picture that production had taken of a helicopter over their house showing it and everything. So uh, I remember Dallas. I remember the music. Well, uh, yeah, I got the hat. I'm an oil man. Uh, I'd like to think that maybe I'm not quite as villainous as, as old uh, JR is. And, and hopefully no one's going to shoot me and uh, no one's going to have dreams about shooting me or anything else. I, mean, I, just, I just live and let live, right? Uh, they need to bring Dallas. Eh, maybe not. That was kind of a soap opera nighttime deal. Uh, but yeah, I remember Dallas. Uh, we all remember it down here. Uh, Doom Turkey 83. <laughs> what a name, Doom Turkey. Uh, there's an AI player on the circle. I need to watch that. I agree. And I don't know that's come out yet. For some reason, I'm thinking it, it had, you know, when I think artificial intelligence, and it's not a fair comparison because it really wasn't AI, but in the 80s, they had Max Headroom, uh, who was just kind of a uh, an animated head that was kind of talking the way you would expect artificial intelligence to, to talk and all that. But uh, that's what I always think when I think of AI. The reality is incredibly different. What's going to happen when they bring some AI robot into uh, forget Jen and Julia from a uh, uh, from a uh, uh, big brother or, you know, any of the twin twists. They're going to bring in some person and their little AI puppet or something. I don't know. They have all kinds of fun stuff going forward. This intelligence, as much as I see now, what's it going to be like 10, 20 years from now? It's going to be an interesting world that we're we're reaching as we get into the the information, the intelligent artificial intelligence age and all that. I don't know, give me a robot. Let him do all the work. And I'm just going to watch nothing but reality TV 25 hours a day because I can afford it because someone else is doing all the work for me. All right. Uh, Mega Junior uh, Jones is saying, do you watch Amazing Race? I I do. One of my favorites. I, uh, I love it. One, because I've traveled all over the world myself. So lots of times they go to places and it's like, oh, I've been there. I remember that. And, and so that's kind of cool. Uh, they also go to places and they don't have time to stop and smell the roses. I know what that's like because sometimes my business trips, I tried as much as I could whenever I traveled, when possible, to to take a look, either an afternoon or a weekend and get a chance to go look around and see the sights and, and everything else. And here's what I like doing. I couldn't always do it, but when I was in a big city, I like to go on a, uh, sounds like a real Australian term, but I like to go on walkabouts. I forget getting in a car and going to the tourist areas. There's lots of times where I would just start walking, walking in a general direction and just see what I could find uh, in, in whatever neighborhood I passed through. That's the way I found a, a spice souk uh, in, in Dubai. Uh, also realized there was a Russian neighborhood where they spoke nothing but Russian. Ate at a McDonald's in Dubai that had its full menu in Russian and nothing else. Isn't that a, a mesh of cultures there? Uh, I did something similar in China. That's where I almost got in Beijing. That's where I almost got arrested by a couple of police officers because I learned that police officers don't like when strange foreigners start taking pictures of them while they're on the corner of a, of a street directing traffic. I don't know why. And I certainly learned my lesson, but, uh, it didn't do a lot of good when I tried to explain to them that, oh, my brother back home was a police officer and I just wanted to take a picture of, of you because you're such fine, upstanding police officers here in China. Yeah, the the language barrier was a little difficult on that one. Uh, so, yeah, you have to be a little careful. But I got to say, I've discovered more fun stuff just walking around and and getting away from the, the well, the touristy area and just seeing the real the way life really is. So, so I love that. And sometimes amazing race does similar in the way they send them back to do the, the different things. And, all that. and I've enjoyed this season uh, as well. I think the task have been interesting and I think they've got some, some good teams uh, as well. <laughs> I couldn't believe, was it two weeks ago? We had that one guy, was he part of the double Dutch team scared to go down the hill because it was too steep. And then you see at the beginning of the next episode that he's on a, parachute or a hang glider and they're they're flying around over the countryside that wasn't part of the official next leg of the race i don't think and it's probably because it took them about four or five hours to convince them that he needed to get on that thing they would have never finished the race but uh 
I do like the amazing race where people are challenged to maybe do things that, that they didn't think were possible and, and just going all over the world is so cool. Now, the thing that's missing from this, this season of the amazing race is figuring out how they want to fly. I always love the older seasons where it's like, Oh, well, we could take this flight, but we only have a 30 minute layover and you know, we're running a risk if we do it, but we could be three hours ahead of everyone else Well, with COVID and all of that. We haven't seen that in a while. I understand that this season was actually filmed. One of y'all may have said this, uh, that this season was actually filmed before the last season we saw of Amazing Race. And that's why last season they had a little bit more control over their flights, whereas this season they're not even really showing them uh, booking their flights or anything. It's just because they're still trying to come out from, from COVID and budgets and, and all of that. I, I love watching them try to figure out how they're going to get from, from point A to point C way over on the other side of, side of the world. I love that. And I love when the amazing race ends up in India and they're trying to squeeze I mean, just a lot of people in India. I always makes for interesting adventures when they're over there. Uh, been to India once, been been to Mumbai, and it was uh, an incredible place to, to visit. Uh, very, very interesting. So, yeah, a lot of fun. I, I love amazing race. All right. Let's see. What else? Uh, Desiree Watts saying, are you going to watch the new season of the challenge on Wednesday? Is it on Wednesday? Oh, yeah, maybe. I, I was a huge fan of, of the, uh, the challenge. My kids got me into it. I mean, I've been watching survivor and the amazing race and, and big brother since just almost since it started survivor and amazing race. I've seen every single episode, never missed it. Big brother started at season eight. So a little bit later coming in the challenge. I got hooked on it with, with my kids telling me about it. The first season I saw was the athletes, pro athletes that came in and competed against the challenge folks and and that was fun and and i've watched it you know through dirty 30 and a lot of the different seasons i just about the time that you had the regular challenge you had cbs challenge with tommy and sis and then david and a lot of big brother folks are on that one and then you had challenge versus the world it just seems like there's and then challenge legends so many different iterations of it that i just couldn't keep up and in the end i kind of just Threw my hands up and saying, yeah, I'm going to take a little break from the challenge. So I don't know. That may be a good time. to do. I, here's what I'll probably do. I'll set it up to record. And as time allows, I'll I'll, I'll fast forward. And I'll watch it and, and see how it goes. I don't know if the challenge, if I enjoy the competitions more or the the drama or, or the strategy. Maybe I, I think at the end, I enjoy the strategy. My issue with the challenge is that sometimes being only an hour long show and not having live fees like Big Brother or anything else. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with some of the strategy because we don't get to see as much because they're so focused on just drama of people throwing stuff at each other and getting upset about who's hooking up with who and, and the comps and all that. Sometimes I feel like the challenge would do better if you had a little bit more time assigned to, to strategy talk and all that. But yeah, I, I'm glad. Thank you for the reminder. I probably will uh, check out and record it because yeah, I love the show. I absolutely do. All right, let's see what else is uh, going on. Uh, uh, so I was, we're talking reality TV, so let's let's talk about that real quick. Uh, the uh, the tryouts, the casting is in process for uh, for the next season of Big Brother. Have y'all turned in your video, sent them in? I know they've had a few casting calls here and there, uh, but really seems like the focus nowadays is more so on the videos. Uh, if you haven't done so, you ought to. Uh, you got nothing. To, what's the worst that's going to happen? You won't hear from them. Which may be because, you know, they, they just didn't have a good fit for you. I, it, it never take it personally. Uh, you have thin, uh, thick skin if you do it. But there's also the chance that they may call. And before you know it, here you are. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'll put this out here. And I've said it before, uh, but I'll say again. If anyone who, who follows Cliff Notes and y'all are out here, yeah, we're family, right? Uh, if y'all ever want to do a video, I am happy to help out, give suggestions, give uh give input uh I'll, I'll do what i can i don't really know a lot of the casting people anymore because robin cass and all has, has moved on doing big brother canada and other shows but uh so i don't have these these inside you know folks that i contact and all that but just as someone who's been on the show and probably has a little bit of a feel i'm always happy to help you all guys out so feel free to reach out to me with dms or whatever and and i'll, I'll do it <laughs> ed brewer saying one bathroom so no all right. Uh, fa fair enough. Uh, one bathroom, two showers. Yeah, you got HOH, but at least in my season, there are always people 
hooking up up in that shower. So, I, you know, other than when I was HOH and I had control over what was going on in that shower, the rest of the time I was I was OK with the uh, the downstairs showers. Let the other people do their their things up, up there. That did and that did take some some getting used to. Not so much that one bathroom. Whatever. I, I lived in a dorm with 300 other guys and uh, our bathroom facilities offered incredibly minimal to no privacy. <laughs> a different year. I mean, a different era. I had big open showers. I had no stall doors. I, I, so the bathroom by itself wasn't the end of the world. But you know what freaked, uh, freaked me out? It irritated me. Was that people just felt like it was perfectly fine just to hang out in that couch there in the bathroom and yeah, don't worry, uh, so and so, you know, Cliff's going in there. Well, we'll just keep on talking out here and uh, acting like we're, I don't know, at, at, at a fair or something. Not sitting in a bathroom. I, I don't know why, and I did it too. I mean, you go where the people are to have your conversations, but I was always perfectly fine to be in the boat room outside, you know, pretty much anywhere uh, before the uh, the bathroom, but. I think it has to do, uh, I mean, they put the couch there for a reason. It's because some people, the, the, the girls are doing their makeup. And so then they're talking to people while they're doing the makeup. So that brings people in. And then you hear people talk. And so, of course, you got to go in and hang out to make sure they're not talking about you. And the next thing you know, you got 15 people in the bathroom and every, the whole rest of the house is completely empty. That, Ed, is, is what irritated me. Not so much that it was a single bathroom, although... Thank you to Kat Dunn, who had the foresight to bring a bunch of poopery uh, into the house with her. And uh, we were all pretty appreciative of that. So yeah, you do have to get a lot, uh, get used to a lot of stuff inside that house. All right. Ma saying in a dorm, uh, so used to it. In a dorm, so used to it. Uh, get get a hotel next year. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Ma. Yeah, it's a uh, dorm rooms are, you just learn to be very friendly with, with the people around you. Uh, you learn to, to live without a whole lot of private space, and and it is what it is. But hey, trying out is still uh, still a lot of fun. All right, what else is going on? We got a few minutes here and there. A few movies uh, that that we we watched, tried to watch. <laughs> we we tried to watch Wonka with uh, Timothy Charlet. Is that his name? Uh, Wonka, which was kind of the prequel to Willy Wonka and all that. I'll I'll just say this. Gene Wilder and uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, way up here. Wonka, eh, not so much. I tried so hard to want to watch it and enjoy it and all that. Couldn't really get into it. I, I'll take the Johnny uh, 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 Johnny Depp one as, as well. Uh, as, as strange as that one was, uh, I couldn't get into Wonka. I can't really give that a big old thumbs up. It was it was a bit of a slog to get through. I can't imagine kids watching that and getting a lot of, of humor out of it. It's a little slow at times. So just being honest, y'all know that me. I'll, I'll put it the way it is sometimes. Uh, the other thing we started to watch was Succession. Everyone keeps saying, watch Succession. Here, Here's the thing. There's so much reality TV. It's getting ready to all hit this summer. I don't have any time because I'll be watching all recaps. So we're trying to get some stuff in ahead of time. So uh uh oh so that was uh uh that was one of the ones that was recommended succession we saw the first few episodes uh everyone there no one makes me happy everyone in that show just irritates me maybe that's the point of it uh there, there's not a lot of well-deserving people it's like a cast of big brother you end up not liking any of them by the end of it but uh we're gonna give that a little bit more shot i still want to watch yellowstone i still want to see friday night lights so uh we got a few shows to watch uh Movies, uh, I, I did like Wonka. I was trying to think of movies here recently that we watched that we, we did enjoy. I, I mentioned, I think, 1917. I watched uh, while we went to New York. That was incredible. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, what else uh, did we watch? There was another one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, y'all tell me. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for advice. What are some movies that y'all see? Not necessarily it has to be at theaters right now. Uh, movies that y'all watch it maybe have just been released on these platforms. I need some. I need some. Uh, some suggestions. Any, any movies that y'all watched uh, that you've enjoyed? Uh, let me know because because my list is getting a little bit low uh, right now. I, I need some some help with it, and uh, I trust y'all to to guide me the right. Y'all know what I like, right? I think so. So 
help me. Help me, please, because I haven't done so well with my choices here recently. Uh, Karen Hummer is saying a big brother question. Do they ask you all to be in the same place right before the nomination ceremony? Um, it's it's interesting. I'm trying to remember. I should know that. Uh, I don't remember. I think hmm, I'm trying to remember if they tell you where to sit on the chairs around the table. I don't know that they necessarily tell you to do that, but they space us out once we're sitting down. So before the HOH comes in with the box and says, you know, it's my duty to pick it up. There, there is production. I'll come over to the speakers and say, hey, Cliff, could you shift just a little bit to your right, please? Uh, and, uh, you know, Kat, could you, uh, could you please scoot around the table a little bit more? Could you give more space? And you're always trying to read a lot into that of, oh my gosh, they're trying to put me between these two people. Obviously they, they want the, uh, the camera right here in my face. Yeah. Uh, they aren't going to tell me to move around that much if they aren't planning to focus on me for this, this episode. So you try to read into every single step that they give you. And so, yeah, there's a little bit of placement just to make sure that the cameras, no one's blocking a camera shot that they need for the, for the different people. And, and sometimes they'll do that even for, you know, HOH, they don't want your head blocking them when they're showing the HOH. So they would shift us around a little bit to make sure that, that we were getting the best shot uh, when that happened. But other than that, I don't really remember them telling us to sit in a specific area. Uh, same way during the nomination, while the HOH is picking his nominations, you know, they always show us in the, the back bedrooms and we're all contemplating and they're playing the, the real slow, depressing music as they're making their choice and all that. The way they would always do it, say, okay, house guest, go into the back two bedrooms. We don't care who goes where, but try to make it about equal numbers in both of them. And so we would go back there and you know, always trying to see who goes into what room with who. And uh, when they weren't filming, there's people that are making faces and acting silly and all that. I called out Tommy one time. I, would, I knew I was going on the block uh, and I really thought I was going home. I don't remember which, uh, uh, which week that was. Cause there were more than there were a few of them for me, unfortunately, but I knew I was really in trouble that particular week. And, uh, uh, maybe it was when Nick picked me and, and Jessica, I don't know. Anyway, we went in the back room and Tommy's just kind of John and laughing. And this is the most fun time in the world. Cause he's part of the big Alliance. I'm not. And he said, Oh, this is, this is just so much fun. This is so much fun. And I looked at him and said, yeah, it's more fun for some of you than it is for others, Tommy. <laughs> I, I must have given him a little bit of a look because he uh, he he said, oh, "Sorry, Cliff, you know, I don't mean anything." But I, I wasn't really upset. I just was very focused and very uh, very nervous, and, and, and it just didn't sit right that he was so unnervous. I, I've told y'all before on the show. I don't want anyone in that house to ever coast, to ever not be worried most weeks that they could be in trouble. And that's what irritated me that about that big alliance during my season was they knew they were safe. They they knew that they didn't have a care in the world. Half the people in that alliance knew for the first six or seven weeks that this was nothing but a vacation for them because they, they were going to be fine. Uh, and, and that, I didn't like that. I, I'm glad we changed that up a little bit. But yeah, uh, that, that, that's a long answer to the short question is uh, sometimes they position us for camera shots, but for the most part, not so much. Now they do position us in the Friday, in the Thursday night, uh, Thursday night live show, they tell us where to sit on both sides. And I don't know why they just, you know, Cliff, we want you to sit over here, sis, sit over here. They tell us the positions in the catch. They also decide who's going to vote when to create maximum drama. I always tried to read into that. I always would say, okay, they're going to want to have this vote if possible close when they cut to that first commercial. So when they cut to a first commercial, I would look at the the three or four or five people that had voted before the commercial, and I'd try to figure out, okay, they either all voted the same, and there's it's going to be pretty much a majority vote, so there's no drama, so they don't care. Or I'd look and say, all right, it's maybe it's 3-2, something like that. There, there's a reason they've put these five people first, and it's because they want to create the drama. So then I'd try to use that to read into maybe who voted for who and you know, where, where things were headed, always trying to figure out, uh, trying to figure out what the angles were and, and all that. Sometimes it worked for our season. There were so many votes that were cast where 
it was close to unanimous decisions because no one wanted to rock the boat. I know people hate that. Me too, but I get it after being in there. So we didn't have a lot of opportunities for me to look at that and try to figure it out. But I tried. Uh, I tried every time. All right. What else do we have? We got about five minutes or so left on on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Fire sent Oppenheimer. Oh, Oppenheimer. I don't know that I'd want to watch Oppenheimer more than once because it's a pretty long movie, right? And there there's some slow moments, but incredible. <laughs> Those people, the idea that they didn't really know for certain whether they were going to just fry the entire atmosphere uh, when they did that test shot scares the bejesus out of me. But, but what a what a what an incredible movie about man and our our ability to create things for good or for bad, right? Yeah, thank you, Miss Fire. This is a fantastic movie. I love that uh, Anatomy of a Fall. I have not heard of. Uh, so I'll have to check that one out, and then. Uh, what else do we have on here? Uh, Amanda saying Yellowstone's the best. Everyone has told me that. I feel like I would just enjoy it. Just one of those cultural dark holes I need to look into. Uh, Amanda Lowe saying, do they ask for your vote ahead of time? No, they do not. Uh, and Ed saying, how leading is production? They're really not, Ed, especially when you're in that house and you're just talking in the kitchen or bedrooms. Or Production has nothing to do. There's no comments being made whatsoever. There's no one whispering in your ear or anything. The only time you get any kind of input from production is during the diary room sessions. And, and there are times where the diary room will ask you questions that, are they leading? Yeah, kind of. I mean, where, where they'll ask you questions that, based on the questions, you start getting a, a little bit nervous about, uh, um, uh, about, you know, why are you asking me that? I wasn't I wasn't worried about that person's alliance or loyalty until you start asking me about how loyal do I think they are. So there's some things like that that uh, uh, that, you know, they, they kind of I don't know if they I'm sure they do it on purpose. They know how to tweak you and poke you and get you all nervous. And then you get in there and you got nothing to do except just be paranoid about everything in the world. So, yeah, there there's a little bit uh, of that that's uh, that's done as far as the other question about voting. No, no one ever came in. I, I'm trying to think during diary rooms ahead of time. I don't think anyone ever said, Cliff, how are you going to vote? Uh, and there were one or two times where maybe it, right up to the end, I, I wasn't real sure. Uh, Kat uh, and, and Sam on the block, I really thought, and nothing against Kat, but I really thought Sam was better to keep in the house uh, than Kat. I felt like I had a little bit more alliance with him. He was a little more dependable. I know, I just, Kat, as it turns out, she had her other connections and all that. And, and I was picking up on some of that. Uh, so I was ready to, to flip my vote over to Sam. I, I told Nicole, I thought that was a better way to go. But then when the votes became obvious that he was still going home, we, we pulled back on it. So, so yeah, sometimes we didn't know our vote until right to the end. They never asked what our, our votes were. Um, uh, Miss Fire saying prod you. Yeah, they kind of, you know, that kind of, there was the things where sometimes you go in there and when you watch on TV, it may just be a little, two minute clip, right? probably not even that, probably a 20 second clip of you saying, oh, man, I'm worried about this person. I, I think if they get HOH, I'm done for something like that. Where in reality, they may have had, had me in for 30 minutes saying, Cliff, go through all the names. Each of these people, if they get HOH, do you feel safe? Do you feel not safe? And you go through it all. And then, you know, maybe at some point they say, well, you said you're safe with Holly. How certain are you that you're safe? Is there any reason that you think that you, you weren't safe? Well, there wasn't until you asked me that question. And now I'm kind of wondering about it. So sometimes they could prod you a little bit like that. Uh, now, I, I say asking questions. It's it's not prodding as in, hey, Cliff, you, you really ought to, uh, uh, you ought to go do this. Uh, there wasn't that kind. The only time I ever ran into that was towards the very end when I knew I was getting ready to go home. And I told Nicole, said, you know what? I might as well make some threats against Jackson Mickey tell me he's going to lose my vote. I, there's no way in the world I'm going to vote for him. I'm going to poison the jury if he sends me out the door and betrays me and really threaten to go kind of nuclear option on him uh, and, and the, you know, really take it to him. And so I had decided to do that, but I was trying to find the right time and production. Yeah, they kind of prodded me there. There was a lot of, hey, Cliff, you know, we know you said you're going to talk to Mickey. When are you going to do it? Well, I don't know, guys. I'm waiting to see when the right time is, when Holly's in DR, when he's, you know, seems like he's a little you know, in a bad spot where it may have a more effect. And 
three hours later, I'd get called back in. Hey, Cliff, have you thought about it? When, you know, when are you going to go talk to Jackson and Nikki? There was a lot of them asking a lot of times, when are you going to do it? Which made me really think, I didn't think it was going to work. But the more they asked me, the more I thought that, well, maybe there is something to this. I think they just wanted the drama. But I started thinking maybe this is the right strategy just because they keep asking me so much that maybe they think it could work if I do it. So in some ways it was encouragement because they asked me so much, but as it turns out, yeah, it is a hail Mary and that it didn't work out, but yeah, you tried to the very end. Right. All right. Ed saying, how long did they keep you in the diary room on average? There was no such thing as the average. It could vary from 30 seconds, a minute. I, literally there were some times where I'd get called in and, They'd say, hey, Cliff, you said something yesterday that was really great, but you kind of you, you, you kind of took a little time too long to describe it. You, you said in a minute what we'd like to get maybe 30 seconds out of you. Could you restate state it or, hey, Cliff, you you came in there and you said uh, you believe this, this and this. And you said, Christy, but we know you're talking about uh, sis. Uh, you know, you just you know, you, you just use the wrong name. Could you say it again with the correct name so we don't confuse so there's sometimes where you'd come in and do something very fast. There's other times like after BB Comics, they brought us in and each of us spent probably two hours in the diary room because they wanted to go over each and every BB comic with us. Uh, talk about what we thought was funny, what we thought was you know great or embarrassing or whatever. They really wanted to get a lot of comments uh, during that episode on, on what the BB comics were. And there were only four or five of us. So by the time you got towards the end of the season and there weren't as many people to talk to, they would keep you in there a whole lot longer because they had to get a lot more content from a, a smaller group of people. So there were times, you know, literally a couple of hours. Now I was, it worked out for me. Uh, I was always very, whenever Big Brother wanted me production, I'd say, yeah, I'm ready. No, no worries. I, I was always trying to stay on their good side. And as a result, they typically would say, Cliff, it's getting late. We really, we know you may be getting ready to go to bed. So what if it, we just get you in the morning? When you get up, we'll get you before the other people are up. Yeah, that works for me, guys. Perfect. Gives me time to think about stuff and all of that. There's other people, without mentioning any names, who irritated production a little bit because when they were called into the room, they would insist on doing makeup and hair and all of that. And sometimes they thought as a way to punish Big Brother, instead of taking 15 minutes, they'd take 45 minutes to an hour uh, just thinking they were punishing Big Brother. Well, Big Brother has a way of getting back at people like that. And pretty soon there were a few people in my cast who were getting called as soon as they took off their makeup. Five minutes later, they'd get called into the diary room or they'd get called at two o'clock in the morning. Don't make Big Brother production mad. They, they control your life. They are the God in, in that house. So, yeah, there's a few uh, ladies in particular in, in my season who didn't make production real happy. I always wanted to stay on their good side. All right, Amanda Lowe is saying 801. All right, we'll shut this down for a Amanda Lowe saying, you messing with Jackson was hilarious. I should have pushed it more. I halfway thought he was going to take a swing at me, get evicted, and I'd get to the final three by default. I, it crossed my mind. It truly did. Uh, but yeah, why not? What's he going to do? Boot me at that point? He already was planning to do that. Uh, Misfire is saying, uh, did Tommy uh, get married uh, or just Christy? Christy is married. Tommy is engaged. Don't know the wedding date yet, but uh, uh, he's he's engaged to uh, to his uh, his boyfriend. So one married, well, a few married uh, now, but uh, with Nicole as well. But yeah, Tommy's not married yet, uh, but it won't be long at all. All right, guys, with that, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Uh, so we have a few. Oh, and Ovi. Uh, Ovi's getting married next year as well. I'm looking for it. It's going to be such a fun wedding. I going to be Tommy's wedding would be quite the extravaganza, I'm sure. But anyway, all right, we'll we'll save that for another day. Guys, y'all have a fantastic Monday. I'm glad y'all all survived the uh uh the the eclipse and all of that. We're all still here. As Annie says, the sun will come out tomorrow. Yeah, it worked out fine. Uh, y'all have a fantastic week. Next week, tax day. Oh, isn't that me fun? I'll have a whole different story for that one. Uh, but y'all have a fantastic week. In the meanwhile, if you haven't already done so, uh, as we wrap it up, uh, please consider subscribing, turning on notifications, thumbs up. Uh, and hey, next week, I, I may have a little special announcement for a, a special guest the following week. We're trying to work that out. So I, I, I'll tease it and, and talk about it next week. Have a great week, guys. Uh, until uh, until then, hey, send me a DM. Let me know what's on your mind. And I will see y'all next Monday. Till then, SKD143. Cheers, my friend. Y'all have a great one. Bye.